Hey guys, welcome back to another video. A bit delayed, but I'm back. Now, this discussion will be split into two videos. This video will be covering squads, and my next video will be covering solos. So how is comp supposed to work in a game that's going to be Escape from Tarkov in VR? Well, it seems it's going to be a hybrid of games. First is the base of the war with its mechanics, and second is Hunt Showdown's Bounty Hunt game mode. Now, if you don't know what Hunt Showdown is, let me explain the game. <laughs> Hunt Showdown is a game where you and up to two friends can go into the bayou. Yeah, we're all timey here. Your goal, simplified, is to get three clues, kill the boss, get its loot, and get out. In Hunt Showdown, you use an ability called Dark Sight. In Dark Sight, your vision is extremely limited, but you can see the vague locations of the clues you have to go to. The more clues you get, the smaller the map or the boss can be will get, with the third clue showing you its location outright. Killing the boss is ultimately your goal. And after you do so, you banish it and wait an eternity, while everyone on the map rushes to your location since its banishment is broadcasted to everybody. Once its banishment is completed, you collect its token. These tokens are special, as you can use your dark side abilities to see the general area of other enemies around you for only 5 seconds. Assuming you defended your loot and extracted, you get points for how well you did in the match. Now the real question is, how is this going to turn into something like this? I have played a fair bit of both Tarkov and Hunt Showdown, so I can kind of see what Combat Waffles is cooking up. Let me take it from the top and explain. You and two team members spawn in a random edge of the map. In this match, there are three to four other teams. In this game, your objective is A, kill other players, more importantly B, collect all three clues, then kill the boss, and C, extract with whatever loot comes from killing him. Now, if we're taking the basics of Hunt Showdown and putting it into DeBoer, I can imagine instead of NVGs, you have to flip down a high-tech piece of gear that also limits your view somehow, and also shows the basic location of Intel. This is your pseudo dark side ability. Oh, and I'm also going to call clues in DeBoer Intel just to differentiate the two. Once you find all the Intel, the boss's hideout is shown to you on either your headpiece or a map on your PDA. Once you get there, kill the boss and his grunts. Now in Hunt Showdown, in order to keep the game from going too fast, once you kill a boss, you have to banish it as I said earlier. Now in Tabor, I can't imagine once you kill the boss you have to perform a banishing ritual on them, so we're gonna have to change that up just a bit. Instead of banishment, they can maybe drop a key code, and you have to find a safe in the building somewhere to unlock it in order to get your loot. Another idea I had is, if they do like the idea of banishment, which is having your PDA download data, and you have to sit near an objective after the boss dies. As for any abilities after collecting the boss's loot, I'm pretty unsure since, unless this item is super powerful, I can't imagine a good gameplay boost for the players who collect it first. Since giving them straight wall hacks in a game with proper weapon penetration, I have no idea. But assuming you make it out and extract, you essentially win and get the most points in the match leaving the other players with much less points for whatever they killed. There are some other things I can think of that would probably have to be addressed for a mode like this. Like how will you pick and choose what gear you bring into this competitive mode? Is it from your personal stash, or is it loaned to you for this mode? Which seems to be most likely. The other thing being that the developers have mentioned once you die, you die with no reviving. But in this competitive mode, I can't imagine getting into a fight early, dying, and having to sit there watching your friends for the next 20 minutes, even as a ghost, calling out enemies. I do have an actually unique mechanic for reviving. Since we can drag the bodies of enemies we kill, we should be able to drag our teammates' bodies away from the action and give them medical attention. In the cinematic trailer, we see a soldier shoot a syringe into a spot into his arm. Maybe we can use a special syringe to bring back our friends back to life. And since the developers are against revives in the base game, as they should, let's say each team starts with only one revive and has to go out of their way to scavenge revive syringes. Leading to a more slow and tactical gameplay, since you don't want to waste your syringes. Not to mention the heavy medical attention they will need after being picked up. Once the game is over and the boss's drops have been extracted by the winning team, 
Each team is then evaluated on a few things. How many kills they got from Fenix, players, the boss's grunts, and the boss themselves. I don't know how I would personally score each, so I'll just leave that there. Something else that can be scored on is how many clues they pick up, since sometimes you can get lucky and find the boss early, so I'm also unsure how it's going to be scored fairly. But I do think a score-based comp mode seems to be a right fit for this kind of competitive match. And not just a straight, how many kills did you get along with the loot. We already have other VR comp games where the objective is just kill the enemy team and cap a point. Why not add some spice to the mix? But that's all the ideas I currently have for competitive squad mode in Ghost of Tabor. Next video, I'll go over thoughts and ideas that can be used for a solo competitive mode, assuming they want to try one that is. Links to that video will be in the description and should be on screen when I do upload it. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe to the channel, it would mean a lot to me. I want to try and get 200 subscribers by the end of November, and see you guys next week!